An extra inning thriller and the Orioles come out on top as Pat Vileka delivers a walk-off single to beat the Rays 5-4 to four in 11 innings. And now we bring in Jeff Arnold on Mass and All Access Extra to break it all down. Jeff, you were on the call. What a win for the Orioles as they win the series, beat the Rays, and do it in extra innings. Yeah, talk about a gritty victory. First time that you'd ever played extra innings where you start with a runner at second base. You get Brian Holiday making a terrific catch that starts a double play. He's usually a catcher. You've got Rio Ruiz going from third base to left field. Uh, you are you empty your bench except for Chris Davis. That was the only guy that you you didn't use uh, in your in the game off the bench, and uh, you just they, they stuck with it. I mean, Pat Vileka coming up with a floater off of Chaz Rowe was the matchup that. Uh, probably Kevin Cash was looking for, and uh, the Orioles managed to uh, come away with the win. But uh, really impressed by the defense in extra innings. First, Cedric Mullins making a big play, and then you got one from Brian Holiday as well. And Vileka was kind of an you know uh, unlikely hero in this one, but you had some guys earlier in the game that have produced through this first week of the season. I feel like we keep saying the names of Rio Ruiz, of Renato Nunez, of Anthony Santander, Pedro Severino, these guys that are right in the heart of the order and getting playing time every single day uh, that came through. And uh, tonight, uh, you know, you got a solo home run from Renato Nunez, his first of the year. It was only a matter of time for him to break out. Pedro Severino continues to hit the cover off the ball. Uh, and Rio Ruiz just looks like, like a completely different player from last year to this year. He's hitting out of a position of strength. I mean, you can just see the mechanics and hear the sound of the contact. Brett ponied this out tonight on our radio broadcast. Because there are no fans in the parks, so you can really tell when a ball is hit well because the sound that it makes. It just it sounds a little bit more crisp. But, yeah, great contact by Ruiz over tonight. He had a sacrifice fly. He drove in a run earlier. A lot to like about the at-bats that he's putting together. And, in general, uh, the at-bats by the Orioles over these last couple of days have been really strong against some really good race pitching. And Wade LeBlanc had a great start as well. Five and a third innings, gave up just one run, struck out three. He has been solid in the two starts that he's gotten at the top of that Orioles rotation. And then you had the bullpen, which faltered a little bit in the middle innings, giving up a 4-1 a lead and the Rays coming back to tie it. But over the past few days, they've been pretty solid, at least more solid, I think, than, than what we come to expect, given what we saw from them last year. Do you feel like this is an improved bullpen from last year to this year? No question about it, and it starts with getting ahead in counts, and it starts with avoiding leadoff walks. Now, there were a couple of those last night, but for the most part, Orioles relievers are attacking the zone and getting ahead. And when you're a reliever, you know that that's what you have to do right out of the gate. You, you can't afford to be like a starting pitcher where you're like, all right, maybe the first inning doesn't go so well, and then I can rebound after that. No, 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 no. When you come in from the bullpen, you need to be throwing strikes and attacking the zone right out of the gate. And we've seen that the last couple of days. I mean, Cole Solcer, uh, he blew a save the other night against the Yankees, but it was great to see him try to back out the next night, and he did exactly what he did in Boston. And for the most part, you've got your relievers coming in and throwing quality strikes. Evan Phillips did a much better job today as opposed to his first outing against the Yankees. Uh, Sean Armstrong, it wasn't his night, uh, but they were able to pick him up, and they, they were able to help him out, and that's kind of what you have to do. If, if one guy struggles, then you're – you're leaning on some of the others to, to help out and, and do what they need to do. But uh, the, the relievers are definitely doing a much better job, and it certainly is helping, too, when you get a start from Wade LeBlanc and you can take some of the, the stress off of their workload. And now they have a chance for a sweep tomorrow afternoon game at Oriel Park at Camden Yards. First afternoon game of the season at home for the O's. Going to be exciting to see them uh, in, in the sunshine and out in the ballpark, despite the no fans, going for a sweep against the Rays. Yeah, it certainly will be. If you're going to be there, I would recommend you probably wear shorts because it probably will be another hot one. But yeah, they'll try and get a sweep against the Rays, and the Rays have gone through a little bit of a skid right now. The, the defense, which is typically one of the best in baseball, has been the worst in baseball. I mean, so Willie Adamas get removed. Uh, he made another error tonight. They had Joey Wendell shift over to shortstop at the very end of the game for defensive purposes. Uh, but you have managed to to pick up two wins against two pretty darn good starting pitchers, Blake Snell, who was the Cy Young Award winner in 2018, and Glassnell, who vacillated between good inning, bad inning, good inning, bad inning. Uh, and the Orioles managed to get some runs against him, and his stuff is nasty. I mean, he probably 
has the best stuff of anybody in their starting rotation. Uh, so tomorrow they'll, they'll have a shot against Chirinos and hopefully tonight also serve as a bit of a scouting report for Tommy Malone on how he can get those hitters out because he and LeBlanc uh, are pretty much carbon copies of each other in what they do. So hopefully he'll learn a little bit from what he did in his last outing against the Red Sox, where maybe he had some changeups leak out over the middle of the plate a little bit too much, and he can make the necessary adjustment, hit his spots, get ahead, uh, because you need to against the Rays. Uh, they're they're looking for their pitches to hit, and if you don't give it to them, they'll work long at bats and, and they'll work some walks as well. So Malone knows he has to be sharp, but he got a little bit of a blueprint from LeBlanc on some things that'll work. Absolutely. The Rays are still one of the better teams in the American League, despite the fact that the Orioles now move ahead of them in the AL East standings and now move into sole possession of second place in the AL East. I know it's early, but look, it's a 60-game season. Got to take those wins where you can get them. It's been a long night, though, Jeff. I'll let you go. Three long nights in a row, pretty much, for the Orioles. So I'll, I'll let you get out of here and get ready for a, a day game tomorrow. Yeah, next time Brett Hollander comes on, you you might want to ask him about his new nickname, the Human Rain Delay, because ever since he's come into the booth, uh, he's been the one that is that has caused us two rain delays. But I uh, know today was a lot of fun. It was great to see them pick up a win in an extra inning game. Uh, they had some guys playing in spots that they didn't expect. Uh, they blew a lead late, but were able to work their way back. And uh, a lot of positive signs for the Orioles over these last uh, 48 hours. I'm glad you're blaming this on Brett because I was about to blame it on Melanie. So I appreciate <laughs> the blame being spread around. But Jeff Arnold, thanks so much for hopping on Mass and All Access Extra. All right, Paul. We'll talk to you soon.